This is the Checkpoints, hosted and co-hosted by Elena Kvanchilashvili. And myself, I'm Georgi Sakadze. It is Sunday and we have gathered in the studio of Forbes Georgia to tell you more about business and economics in Georgia and worldwide. 10 p.m. it is and the first news to share is definitely about the start of the vaccination process. Finally, 43,000, 200,000 people, including med personnel and some other risk groups, are set for their first jabs of AstraZeneca already next week. The process of gradual delivery of vaccines takes off to the full extent. We will have a stage-by-stage -stage supply of vaccines in Georgia, the Minister of Health, Ekaterina Tikaradze, said, summoning the special press conference to air the news. After their first jab of vaccine, the second one of the same people is planned in about 6 to 12 weeks. This is the time when the minister says another dose of AstraZeneca will enter the country. As for the Pfizer vaccine, the minister assures us that the final date, end of March, is still in place, but the government tries to have the vaccine delivered even earlier. On the background of this very important information, indeed, Elena, we have still to mention, and I have read this news also on our English language agency, BM.G, that the Danish head authority on Thursday halted the use of the AstraZeneca coronavirus vaccine for two weeks. You will probably agree that many have elaborated on this news, spreading doubts on the effectiveness of the vaccine. What's your take on, on all of this? Um, I basically have one answer here. Um, Georgi and our Forbes Health platform has been stating it on so many levels that there is a desperate need for the informational campaign. Citizens of Georgia have the right to make an informed choice. Today, I think they lack sufficient trusted information about the vaccine. Anti-vaxxer attitudes are not only in Georgia, but globally, which makes it difficult to dig through the vast volumes of misinformation and fake news. As an editor-in-chief of the agency, I fully realize the need for such uh, news and information. As for the news that you have mentioned particularly, uh, Georgi, it follows reports of serious cases of blood clots among vaccinated people, a statement uh, read. However, the authority stopped short of saying there was a direct link between the vaccine and the blood clots um, at the time being. It is currently not possible to conclude whether there is a link. We are acting early. It needs to be thoroughly investigated, Danish Health Minister Magnus Junike said on Twitter. Uh, we are following this news, Georgi, closely and provide the updates uh, um, as available. And let me remind our readers to follow us both on BMG and Forbes.g for more news and analysis uh, on this and many other important topics. Eleni, I just remembered uh, mm, that uh, you have asked about the a efficacy mm -hmm. of exactly AstraZeneca vaccine, head of NCDC, Amiran Gamprelize, in our joint morning TV program on Fridays. What was the answer back then? Uh, yes, Georgi. Uh, Amiran Gamprelize then told us that SAGE Group at World Health Organization, which unites the most reputable experts and scientists, has given its approval for AstraZeneca to be also used among the elderly and that it is safe to use. We knew nothing about this new concern with the blood clots at that point, unfortunately. Vaccine is the most important tool to fight this pandemic, definitely. But the already traditional methods against coronavirus must still be in place. I mean, here face masks and sanitizing, hands and all that. Mentioning Amiran Gamprelize, he was the one to share NCDC's report that the rate of face mask wearing in Georgia reduced to 43% and that uh, this could lead to worsening of the epidemiological situation in the country. And this is, um, this is true, Georgi. According to Friday's data, 395 new cases of coronavirus infection have been detected in Georgia, as a result of which the total number of infections has increased to over 274,000. The death toll also rose by 9 to 3,622. At this stage, 252 people are in quarantine and um, 1,324 people people are in the hospital under supervision. Uh, another 133 patients are being treated at COVID hotels. This is a statistics issued by NCDC and uh, reported by BM.G by Saturday early morning. And Eleni, do we know 
uh, what the big picture, I mean the region in this, uh, in this case is yes. uh, as of Friday, Saturday morning. Saturday yeah. morning. Yes, Georgi, and we are constantly updating this information for our readers on BMG, as you have already mentioned, for them to have a fuller picture of what's going on uh, in the region. Overall, we can say that at this point, Georgia is in a much better position by main parameters such as new cases and total cases of infection. But what is catching my eye every time is that our immediate neighbors, Armenia and Azerbaijan, have less death toll in the last 24 hours, and I think the Ministry of Health must analyze uh, this data very thoroughly. And back to where uh, we started the short review, vaccines and perceptions mm -hmm. of these vaccines. What we've heard from the ministers this week was also the emphasis on improved perception. Uh, yes, but we haven't seen any studies on that uh, yet. The most recent study that we saw was from ACT, which uh, said that every third Georgian citizen living in Tbilisi either is not ready to get a jab, 31%, or has not decided yet, 29%. And this also shows the necessity for the consistent information campaign, which then leads to an informed choice whether or not to be vaccinated, and not a choice that is based only on mostly emotional perceptions instead of rational decisions and this is exactly what Forbes Health Platform has been advocating since its establishment. To move to the next topic and since we uh, have started with good news uh, let us proceed with the, with the trend and focus the uh, attention of our viewers and followers on the fact that OMW Petrom, the largest energy company in southeastern Europe, announced the signing of the production sharing contract PSC for the offshore block, the second in the exclusive economic zone of the Georgian Black Sea, on which Petrom won in June 2020 the international tender organized by the Ministry of Economy and Sustainable Development of Georgia for, for offshore acreage. Um, yes, uh, Christina Bircher, CEO of the, uh, Petrom, said by signing the PSC for the offshore exploration block, the second in Georgia, we um, take uh, an important step in the eastern part of the Black Sea in line with our strategy of looking for opportunities in the Black Sea region. We believe that the Black Sea has a high potential for the upstream sector and with our operating experience for over 40 years in the Romanian offshore area, we have a competitive advantage in evaluating the opportunities of this basin. The PSC provides for exploration, development and production of hydrocarbon resources in the offshore block, the second. It covers a total area of five of over 5,000 square kilometers and the water depth uh, w uh, varies between 400 and 2,000 meters. As an operator, OMV Petrom will establish an operating company in Georgia, proceed with uh, geoscientific and environmental studies in already in 2021 and prepare for for a large offshore 3D seismic campaign in 2022, which will allow for a detailed evaluation of this block's potential. That's correct. And let's, uh, let's give a little background to the story. Exploration in the Romanian continental shelf of the Black Sea started in 1969. The first hydrocarbon discovery was in 1980. And the first production in the Black Sea started in 1987. Currently, Oinwi Petrom has exploration, development and production operation in the shallow waters, uh, its uh, so-called Istria block and exploration operations in partnership with Exxon Mobile in deep water areas, Neptune Deep, it's, it's in Romania. Oil and natural gas production in shallow waters amounts to approximately 24,000 per day. In 2020, it accounted for almost 17% of the group's domestic production in a joint venture with Total, which is an operator, OMV Petrom is also active in exploration and uh, appraisal activities in the Han Esperho block in Bulgaria. The total exploration area of OMV Petrom's interest in Romania and Bulgaria amounts to 26,000 uh, square, square kilometers, kilometers yeah. Square yeah. Kilometers. Yes, um, and a short profile about the company itself uh, right here. Georgi OMV Petrom is the largest integrated energy company in southeastern Europe with an annual group hydrocarbon production of 53 million 
BOE in 2020. The group has a refining capacity of um, nearly 5 million tons annually and operates an 860 uh, megawatt high um, efficiency power plant. The group is present uh, on the oil products retail market in Romania and neighboring countries through 793 filling stations at the end of 2020 under two brands, OMV and Petrom. Um, and uh, uh, also, um, OMV, one of the largest listed industrial companies in Austria, holds a 51% stake in OMV Petrom. The Romanian state, through the Ministry of Economy, Energy and Business Environment, holds another 21% uh, of OMV Petrom shares, uh, Fondul Propriet. Tatia uh, holds 7% uh, um, and also around 21% is the flea float on the Bucharest Stock Exchange and the London Stock Exchange. Besides Elena, OMV Petrom is the largest contributor to the state budget mm -hmm. uh, with the contributions of approximately 32, 32 billion euro in taxes and dividends paid between 2005 and 2020. Since 2007, OMV Petrom has including corporate responsibility principles into its business strategy. Between 2007 and 2020, the company has allocated approximately 72 million euros to develop communities in Romania, focusing on environmental protection, education, health, and local development. On July 29, 2020, ONW Petrom announced its support for the recommendations issued by the tax force on climate related financial disclosures and we can definitely say regarding risks and opportunities on climate change. Yes, um, Georgi, uh, we provided a profile of the company and Georgia's Prime Minister, Rakhli Garibashvili, also commented on the agreement signed by the Minister of Economy, Natia Turnava, with OMV Petrom. According to the head of the government, the interest of the Austrian company to start gas exploration works in Georgia reaffirms that the country has a good business environment. But Georgi, to get on to another um, topic uh, of our review, namely FDI, I can say say that uh, this business environment definitely lacks foreign investors and investments at this stage and in some sectors particularly. Here are the numbers, not happy saying that and delivering. FDI in Georgia amounted to US dollars, it's approximately 617 million in 2020. It's for sure preliminary data, down about 53% for the same period of the previous year, it's Geostat report. Transferring of ownership from non-resident to the resident units in several companies is considered to be the main reason for the decline of FDI, which reduced the value of foreign direct investments by 340 million and how? No, sorry, 340 million 500,000 US dollars, according to Geostat. 560 million in total investment was reinvestment, which which was actually 90% of FDI. Uh, the largest share of FDI was registered in the financial sector, totaling USD uh, 400 million. Uh, this sector generated 400 million USD with a year-on-year increase of 47%. Archil Gacicilad, the CEO of the Bank of Georgia, told BMG that the decline in foreign direct investment was not surprising. I mean, the economic crisis in 2020, he said the government should make the most of this period to attract investment in all sectors. 2020 was a difficult year, probably the most difficult in recent times, so the decline in investments was not very surprising, but we have to use this period to do everything to attract investments in all sectors. Investments are not only an inflow of money, but also new jobs, knowledge transfers, and this is the long-term success of Georgia, said Archil Gacicila, the CEO of the Bank of Georgia. We are BMG. Follow and subscribe for business and economics news.